Welcome back to another segment of Boldly Now. I'm Rachel Morrison. And I'm Michael Sean Conaway. And today we have the amazing pleasure to be with our dear friend, Daniela Plattner. Daniela, welcome. Thank you. Absolutely. Hi, Daniela. And, um, you know, I think uh, it's particularly fun for us because every time we get together, the, the, usually we get some silliness going and some great energy. So uh, thank you for bringing this to our day today. I think actually everybody in our audience needs a little bit of uplift. Actually, maybe that's what this whole event is about, is like, hey, things have been intense. They've been a little crazy and our economy's crashing. Uh, we've been stuck in our houses. I'm worried about my health. Maybe actually, maybe there's some, some grief. Maybe there's some, some things that have happened in my family and community. Um, and, I, and we want to acknowledge that, but we also want to be uplifted and, and feel the kind of, uh, yeah, sweet joy and, and, and energy that's, that's available to us all when we come together. Uh, mm -hmm. But to start off, I'm really just like, how are you? How are things going in your world? Um, you know, what's, what's up with you right now? What's up with me right now is I am currently looking at a beautiful view of the Hudson River in uh, upstate New York. I was in the city, in New York City, for 40 days, and now I am up here for the past 30 days. I am on day 70 of being completely solo. And that in and of itself has been quite a trip. Although tomorrow, for the first time in 70 days, I'm going to see someone and that's gonna be my mother. So she will be my first hug in 70 days besides a lot of hugging myself. <laughs> and uh, how am I doing? I'm feeling, I'm feeling stronger than ever in a lot of ways. I moved through my experience with the virus and three relapses and a lot of crumbling and deconstructing and fear of losing my life and my breath amidst everything that was going on and my um, uh, impossible to disconnect from my connection to the totality of everything. <laughs> so it's, it's been a lot, um, but moving through, I feel like there's a new act that's coming through for a lot of us now that we're transitioning into. Yeah. Um, and what is that? What is that new act? What are you, what are you feeling? What's emerging? The first word that comes to mind is an integration act. Mm. Like from the big, whoa, chapter opening. Oh my God, adapting, settling, grappling with all of the primal emotions and the complex emotions. And now it's a new wave of, okay, now we're starting to transition back. You know, I'm going to see someone for the first, like see in person someone for the first time, but more, but bigger, like in terms of all the events that we're doing and, and, and I'm, I'm deep in the events industry. It's like, okay, we're starting to think about coming back to in real life and hybrid. We're starting to gather with more people. So how are we, what is this new uh, integration phase with the fears that are coming up and the guidelines that we have to implement and the protocols that we have to have and like the desire to connect mixed with the like, is it okay to, and how are we going to navigate and a settling in, in our businesses in this new way after, well, not for all businesses. It really depends on which businesses. So really for me, it's like, it's an integration. Rachel, I'm seeing your face. What are you thinking? Oh man, I'm thinking things. So the thing that I was thinking about, when you said that you were going to see a person, your mom being that person in over 70 days, I, we've talked a lot of the, this COVID time together and so I get that I've been you know, kind of with you in that process and I'm one it's like I want to go into that with you for a moment like you're gonna embrace your mother right there's that and like all the emotions that come up with that but then I was thinking also like for everyone like some people can't hug their mom but also mother earth right when we get to re-embrace her again I'm just curious if you have anything to kind of lean into with some of those thoughts Whoa, re-embracing mom and mama earth. Hello. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, wider view, mama earth, re-embracing. This has definitely been a process for a lot of us to come back home and the lungs of the earth and our own lungs. I know when I was, my lung capacity was, you know, if you're normally breathing like 70%, my lung capacity was, you know, was like 30 40 percent it was frightening and just thinking about like the amazon burning and my lungs burning and um i could go on more about 
how our body is connected to the earth and what this is bringing up for us, you know, and for opportunity to reconnect to mother. I think right now, like it really it melted my heart a bit when you just said seeing my mom, um, who's the ultimate, you know, my connection to mama to being mm -hmm. in this body. And she's so lovely and so wonderful and so brilliant. And um, she's in the music industry. So it's been a huge like challenge for her, like concerts, you know, um, canceled and postponed. And um, she's almost 70 and she's just the most brilliant, amazing human that I know. And um, she's been alone also for this entire time in New York City. Mm. Um, and it's been really scary. Um, and so I'm like, I'm nervous in some ways. I'm nervous to um, get out of this bubble. Selfishly, you know, you can be like all pieced out and zen and then you see your parents and it's like, ah, <laughs> damn it, I was doing so well. <sighs> but uh, so I'm like, okay, how can I maintain the same sense of like strength and confidence and clarity and peacefulness that I feel within myself when I'm alone when I, with my mother? It's like the ultimate test no matter how brilliant and wonderful and great our relationship is. And, and then um, just like this deep longing and missing um, is like, I'm very excited for that. Um, it's like, it feels like that middle for me, it's like, yeah, the, the transition, the act two that I just spoke of, it's like, okay, and act two starting tomorrow. Yeah, well, and I think that's up for a lot of people right now. Right, they, they, they know that there is going to be this new relationship that they will be walking into life with. But um, I think in the back of everyone's mind, there's a slight level of trepidation that, that we're all experiencing and, and even hesitation and nervousness and awkwardness and like an, an anticipation of the overwhelming emotions that we'll have when we reconnect with all the things that we love. And I think that's really up for a lot of people, even though they don't know it yet, because we're still like in the middle of this thing. But I think it's going to happen in waves, droves and, and waves for a lot of people coming up here soon. Right. It just, it, that made me think of like, will we be able to collectively like maintain the insights and recognitions that we've had in this incredible liminal space of what we've just been going through and then bring that forth into this next chapter when we return? Or are we gonna really return back to a lot of the unhealthy patterns that uh, we were living by before? I know for me personally, I like when uh, the, when I reached my peak COVID experience, uh, after that, I eliminated 12 major toxins from my life and that, like really unhealthy patterns. And so now it's like, will they return? And that's just in my own personal life, but also the question bears, you know, collectively. And I'm curious what you all are witnessing in terms of like the circles that you run in. Um, do you think that that there is a like uh, new patterns, like a cleansing that has happened? And do you also feel like that will return back to, you know, the metaphorical smoking cigarettes again and drinking alcohol or not so metaphorical? <laughs> Um, yes, you know, I think what the answer to that is, is, is it's really clear that we don't know. Um, you know, that, that what's, what, where, where, we, where we've been, we're just starting to get a handle on that. And we don't actually even know, you know, economic impacts or any of these kinds of things, or even how long um, our ways of being together are going to be disrupted. Uh, and that's, that's disrupted by the virus and also just disrupted by our response to the virus, our collective uh, uh, response and governance response. And um, inside of not knowing, we actually have this other magic power called imagination. And, and because we don't know, we can begin to imagine what we'd like to have. Mm. And then once you can imagine what you like to have, then you can start to say, well, what, what, what are some, well, how can I have some proof that that's gonna happen? Well, I'm gonna have more intimate connection with people will be something I'm, I would be, be likely to imagine. Uh, so then I could just actually fill my calendar full of, times to be intimate with people and share deeply uh, and then just generate the proof for the thing I just imagined in the, in the moment. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, like we've been under a, a mass hallucination and I'd like to move us to a, 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 you know, a mass visualization, like in a mass moment to like, let's just picture this for a minute. And I, I, 
you know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a generative futurist. I want people to imagine 100 year futures. We don't even need to do that. Let's imagine three month futures right now. Let's just imagine three and six and nine and 12 months where we may still be in this disruptive time, but there might be, like you said, you release toxins and you let go of some, some habits and behaviors that were you know, probably just time to let go of. And then I'm imagining that you've also picked up behaviors that stand in those places. And they may not be habits yet, but they could become habits soon. I, well, I, that yeah. seems like the whole pattern we need to do for all of civilization right now. Let's just go let go of some bullshit <laughs> and adopt some imagined stuff that's much better than the bullshit we're walking away from. Totally, like pulling out the weeds and then what are the new seeds that we're planting? I know for me personally, like bringing a deeper meditation practice every day and, and um, and cooking food every day and starting to play instruments again, like the saxophone, the shooty box and singing more than ever before and bringing my journaling practice again and like energy work and therapy and coaching. Like I brought in the things that uh, I was missing in a very challenging past few years. And now I feel so much more, more myself, but like, I love how you just described it as like visualizing what is possible and then actually making sure with tangible steps that you're, uh, actually implementing that vision into real life three months or like even tomorrow we may, we may need to be actually uh inventive about our tomorrow we actually, right. you know, how do we plan for three months when we don't know when you know we're going to be able to meet mm -hmm. in one month or you know we, we've been taking i run a community of event creators and event marketers and we've been taking a poll you know every month see like when do you think we're going to come back and it's like keeps shifting and everyone's thinking different things and then how can we plan like what are the decision matrixes i'm curious actually as a generative future it's like when you're you have like scenario a scenario b scenario c and then you have to plan or envision accordingly to each of these directions yeah i mean in, in general when we talked about generative futurism we're talking about far out. Um, and then there's this other thing called, you know, scenario planning or, or predictive futurism. And that's in, inside like event stuff, um, you're, you're doing scenario planning. If we get out at this time, we'll do this. If we get out, we do that, that time of this. Uh, but a generative component would be, regardless of when we get out, this is what we're going to accomplish. This is who we're going to be in that time. This is how we're going to stand, whether it's digital or in-person or whatever, we're going to be able to create different things. And at Boldly Now, we have a, we have a venue in Cancun in November and we've decided to just do digital this year. That, 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 that it doesn't matter. That actually being focused on the, on the physical location, which is great, it's the Ritz Carlton, it's a five-star resort, you know, it's turtles on the beach, you know, the whole thing. But it's, it's not why we're getting together. We're getting together to, to support big ideas and, and bold projects. So like the, the, the beingness of it, is what we, we're trying to focus on. And then once you get clear about the beingness, you can do it in a parking lot, you can do it at the Ritz-Carlton, you can do it online, it's, it, it literally doesn't matter. Um, and I think what happens so much right now is we get so attached to our plans, especially future ones that we had about the future in the past, our future plans from the past, and, and all we're being asked to do is just let go of all that and invent newly over and over again. And, and you know, that's what disruption's about. And it's going to cause some damage from, uh, I, I know the, the CEO of Freeman, they, they produce, you know, the biggest conferences in the world. They had to lay off about 70,000 people. And that's, you know, like, and it's a family run business that's been around for a hundred years. It's like, you know, crying while they're laying off people type stuff. And yet that's just what's so, I mean, when you were sick, Danielle, that, that was just what was so, I mean, you, you like, there's no, there's no arguing with what's so very often but who we are in the face of that or, or what our dreams and our ambitions are and, and who we plant seeds of being in the future, those are the things that, that we tend. And then when we get there, we're able to be filled with that thing that we've, we've put that lovingness into. So I think with your group, I'd say, keep coming up with scenarios and then just try to figure out who you're gonna be for your audiences and then everything will work out. Right, and that's what you just hit on. It's like before you would be drawn to going to a venue like the Ritz Carlton, and that was the main attraction and that was the entertainment and that was the draw. And now in the virtual space, like what's the venue? Who, what are we being attracted to? Actually like the value system is, is shifting. So it's not just like entertainment and, and, and the value that we're giving is more around like interactivity and connectivity and the values and then entertainment is more on top. 
So it's an amazing time to see like, how do you, how do you lead with that beingness and then your marketing? <laughs> like, how are you like really drawing people in to the beingness and not to some fancy Ritz Carlton venue? Yeah. And then we can go back to Ritz in, in the future at some point, right? I mean, we, I, we all, we all want to go to the Ritz. I'm not saying it's bad. <laughs> um, and just know. another, just, just like what just came to mind now when you're saying like in the uncertainty is just like, that's, that's why I dance. I was like, my, I felt my body just moving. Like, how do we actually navigate and enable ourselves the opportunity to practice letting go? Because mm. collectively we need to let go so much right now. Mm. And so just like letting go of our head, like letting go, letting go and shaking out, letting go in water, letting go and writing, just finding opportunities in a safe context to practice letting go. Mm. So we can train our ability to let go in the wider macrocosm that we're navigating. Microcosm, letting go macrocosm letting go definitely yeah there's a lot of people right now in in the world that are uh, kind of like rigid in what what's what their experience is right now uh where they um maybe have to hold it together in certain areas of their livelihood and things like that so just inviting people into the practice of letting it be okay to let it all let go mm -hmm. is huge for people right now Danielle. Yeah, and I, I would say letting go into um, into a context of all as well. That you know, no matter what's going on, you know, that if we can hold the context that all is well, or all is as it as it needs to be right now, um, and and you know, like the confront of that for me with kids is that's including death. I mean, like, how do I have the end of my life be inside of the context of all as well? Um, it's really? confronting and challenging, but then if I can do that then literally all is well. I mean, at that point, if I can even hold my death and my own passing inside of a context of all is well, or is, it is as it, as, it, as it needs to be now or should be now, or however you want to contextualize that. <sighs> wow, there's really nothing to worry about. <laughs> and, and it's beautiful um, in theory, and it's hard in practice. And it's easier to say in our you know, I struggle with this, like in our privilege bubble, you know, that it is okay, because like, what if it's not okay? Like, what if you don't have food? And what if your kids and an abusive home stuck in the quarantine? And, you know, what if it's actually not okay? Um, yeah. And, and the general idea is like, okay, this is as it is. And how can we accept like, I have this mantra, because I saw my, 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 um, one of my best friends just had a baby and she just rocks the baby and she says, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. While the baby's crying. So I've started to implement that myself. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's like, it's okay. And, and when I had my peak COVID experience, um, and I thought I wasn't going to be able to breathe, I was struggling for my breath. And that was what came to mind after the resistance. I was like, maybe it's just my time to go. Maybe it's okay. Maybe this is it. Maybe I'm just time to accept my time to go. And I accepted it. And in that moment I softened and this other voice pushed through me. That was this resilience and the strength. It was like, it's not your time to go. You've got a lot more life to live. Like get your act together. We're going to do this. And I like got pulled on my resources and pulled through it and got myself like out of the panic also and through the night and to the doctors and the right support and I like moved through it but it was like it was in that letting go that it allowed space for something bigger to move through in that acceptance I would say that is the best example of all as well I've ever heard it was not okay that you couldn't breathe but in that context you're able to give yourself the space to both let go and then find that that next gear I think we have we have such resources as human beings inside, and even you know, even people in really really um, what we would call in the West you know dire circumstances. I'm thinking of you know me shooting in the garbage dumps in Thailand that are 100 feet high in the air, and just some of the beauty I saw in the human beings there. You know, like by our terms, you know that that's intolerable. But then they're smiling and happy and and loving their children just like anybody else. It's like oh, uh, yeah it's there's beauty even when there's not beauty there's beauty and even when there's challenge there's grace um and and i think in the moment 
it's you know it's it's confronting and sometimes it's really painful um and then there's to me i i almost always come to this point where in the pain i find this the sweetness to it mm. the sweetness of the of the suffering and the sweetness of the sadness i just felt this pain in my heart when you said that like and then it kind of felt good <laughs> i've been trying to work with like when i feel when i think it's pain it's like wait actually maybe there's nothing wrong with it maybe it's it's actually what if this was actually pleasurable yeah and it shifts. like where is the sweetness in that in that pain because that pain like that sadness connects us to what we love and what matters to us and that pain of rage like, protects what we need to defend and what we care about there's there's so much beauty that can be found in that pain we just i think it's just like collectively my prayer is that we all can find the right resources that you speak of and tools that work for us to be able to navigate the pain and find the beauty and the blossoming in that the weeds and the seeds amen sister and i i just it reminds my reminds me of uh, my buddhist training is that pain is pain suffering over pain is something we generate and and so pain and suffering are different you know mm. and, uh, and and uh you know it's it's when we're in pain and then we reject the pain that we have suffering and and it's it's super simple but it's super hard to practice sometimes to actually accept whatever that feeling is and then you know thinking about myself in these places i've been i filmed and also just being confronted with my own western conceit of what life is supposed to be about and and then like all this stuff is a construct like all the way we perceive all these things and that doesn't mean to get in some idea space that it's all a construct and treat it like that but that there's a like feeling at the edges of it it's like oh is it real or is it just something i've made and then oh there's pain and then how am i responding to that and how's this whole apparatus around that and um yeah we need to feel it and actually that the not feeling it is another way of of denying it and causing the suffering again and um, right now, there's a there's there's a lot of pain, and there's a lot of shock and confusion. We need to feel that, and we also need to be the seed. We also need to be planning that, you know, that garden for the future moment. So, thank you for that metaphor. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold on to that one for a while. Weeds and seeds. This we're at a weeds and seeds time. <laughs> well, and sometimes it's even when the heart's breaking, it's actually finding that it's breaking open. Mm -hmm. right so that there's still the, the beauty aspect of it and sometimes sadness is really just a, a really profound release mm -hmm. right or sometimes the fear is really us having the anticipation that is the catalyst to propel us into like what our next step of courage actually is mm -hmm. right so it's like it's it's good for us to not identify with the the negative aspect of it but to feel it but know that this too shall pass and that the next piece of what's wanting to happen is just around the corner if we allow ourselves the the moment to take that breath to you know as you said earlier danielle it's just fully surrender into what that experience actually is to be fully present with it to then actually see what wants to happen next instead of worrying about what's going to happen next because mm -hmm. it kind of takes you out and for me that the curiosity is my gateway. Mm -hmm. Ooh, wow. Ugh, what is this? Hmm, I feel it. Can I sense it? Can I be with it? Can I ask it? Can I look at it? Hmm, it's like curiosity as, as the gateway. And, it, and, and, and emotions as our, as our veto points that create our whole existence, which is a whole other conversation. Um, but I just want to also share what just came to mind is um, around this conversation is of pain as um, kind of a, a passageway um, is the best equation that I ever learned. This got me through a lot of my 20s was your pain plus your passion equals your purpose. Mm. Yeah. So the thing that hurts you the most plus the things that bring you the most joy, your passion, mm. together combine equal your purpose or your path of action. Mm. 
Yeah, beautiful. He's like that encapsulates things I've been saying for a long time in a very simple way. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, last question. Like big bold dreams for yourself. Anything you've got out there in front of you that maybe wasn't present before COVID and is now starting to emerge in your thinking or in your heart? Yes. Um, well, bigger <laughs> conversation. <laughs> um, Give us a sneak peek, a little a tiny glimpse. Good. A snippet? Yeah. What, what has been coming through and like how I've navigated this process and, and the resources I've pulled on through to navigate this time um, and from, from what I've witnessed from uh, how a lot of incredible humans are navigating this time is like is maps and frameworks and like an approach um, that is, uh, yeah, that's coming through that, that has been brewing for what feels like a lifetime. And so I'm just like really excited to share that and to bring people together to experiment and explore with new ways of being together um, creatively to solve problems. Like I wanna bring, I am so excited by bringing diverse people to the table, engineers, artists, scientists, to converse around specific topics and use some of these creative methodologies to problem solve and think through and create plans of action. And what I'm really excited within that specifically, like what I'm really excited to bring forth and to share, is like that this old, this old paradigm of like our uh, analytical, top down, cognitive, neocortical decision making and planning it's like not just about that. It's also beneath, 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 and it's utilizing the intelligence of our whole bodies to make more effective decisions to solve problems and think through issues. So like whole body intelligence, whole person intelligence as a pathway forward. Wow, that sounds like some wisdom that I am personally ready to receive. Uh, and I have a sneaking suspicion the rest of the world is ready for that as well. Um, so thank you, Daniela. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for speaking to our audience. You know, every time we get a chance to intimately glimpse into the life of another human being and be with them for a while, our world opens and our, um, our sensing a capacity of our heart and understanding capacity of our brain expands. So thank you for expanding our brains and our hearts today. Uh, we look forward to the next chapter of things you're bringing into the world. And we look forward to seeing you more and more and more in Boldly Now's world. Me too. Thank you so much for inviting me. I love that you're doing this. You both are a gift to humanity with your wisdom and your love and just like your <laughs> Keep on going. Don't stop. Thank you for inviting me and doing this. We love you. Love you. Too. Love you too.